Today I have the pleasure of speaking with uh, industry expert and the founder of the term Technology Metals, uh, Jack Lifton. How are you today, Jack? I'm fine, Tracy. Thank you. Jack, you were fantastic at the Technology Metals Summit, so let's start there first and foremost. What was your favorite panel? I was extremely interested in, in the panel on the various alternate technologies for, for the separation and purification of, of rare earths. That, that uh, got my rapt attention because it was the first time, I think, that all of the experts were together and could uh, talk to each other as well as answer the same question. That was very interesting. And of course, for all of our audience members, uh, we will be publishing this panel. It's just being edited right now. We had how many? We had seven experts from seven yes. different firms? Yes. And yes. then the panel beforehand, we had an additional extraction technique process because we couldn't fit him uh, periodic products on the uh, right. final right. Pa final right. panel. So, of course, we did. We had uh, seven uh, people on the panel, seven different companies represented on that particular panel. Uh, and prior to that panel, we had an eighth uh, technology extraction process. Can you tell right. me what was the most surprising thing that you heard from that panel? Uh, how far along they are. Uh, it's, we, this, this work has been completely masked by, by the uh, industry's interest only in the share price of the various uh, companies. In fact, uh, almost all, as far as I could tell, all of these technologies are allied with a, with a particular rare earth uh, junior. So that uh, th they're, not, they're not competing with each other. They've already competed and, and, and been chosen by a rare earth junior. It's really interesting to see this. So the technologies are each backed, so to speak, by a particular junior, which means that they are focused on a single type of deposit. Now, that's the interesting thing because, in fact, I think all of them have universal application, general application, let's say. But we heard about their application to particular rare earth pro projects. There's a lot more to, to tell about all these technologies, a lot more to hear. All right, so speaking of that, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jack, and we're going to go through right. the list. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we had Jay Pickerts from uh, yeah. Rare Element Resources. Frankly, mm -hmm. he was one of my favorites on the panel. I thought he was extremely articulate, and I mm -hmm. enjoyed receiving an update because Rare Element Resources tends to be on the very conservative side in, in discussing their technology. Did you yes. have anything you'd like to add for our audience on Rare Element Resources process? Yeah, I, I, I was uh, very impressed, and I've been calling their process, what I knew about it, targeted solvent extraction, which by which I meant targeted to their uh, deposit. But uh, they urged me to call it zero discharge or zero effluent type of solvent extraction. And what they're emphasizing is that they have no waste product, no waste stream. And since we need to know, from a chemical engineering point of view, that it, when you're processing things like separating, you're separating rare earths, sometimes half the cost can be just disposing of waste products and, and managing the environment. I, therefore, I believe that the solvent extraction system developed by Rare Element Resources is state of the art. Okay, well that's, uh, I appreciate your feedback and for our Investor Intel audience, please note that Jack Lifton did not moderate this panel. He actually spoke and we're going to talk, talk to you about this in just a minute, but let's run through the rest of these gentlemen, please. Um, Neil Isat from IBC, Advanced uh, Technologies, which of course is supported and endorsed and represented by uh, UCOR, Rare Metals. Right, right. Um, tell us a little bit more about this. The uh, he the gentleman who spoke is the son of the man who actually uh, made this uh, technology commercial and has been working on it for about 50 years and I believe that company has been in existence about 25 years. There's no question that that uh, the process, the molecular recognition technology, is now one to be called a standard process. It, again, 
its application to UCOR is a particular application, but it, it has broad application and it's already in use in several industries. I believe uh, precious uh, group, uh, platinum group metals, and I know for a fact it's used to purify copper in and, and large copper refineries. So its application to rare earths was the interesting part. And of course, I think that Mr. Isaac was extremely technical, but it was very interesting, and I urge people to, to follow the technology. Speaking of technologies that can be used in other industry se sectors, we of course mm -hmm. had uh, Texas Rare Earth Resources uh, K Technologies Group. Wes Berry was actually speaking on this panel. Um, mm -hmm. So I found K Technologies very interesting and enjoyed the team that was there. Yes. Uh, the K Technologies it has developed continuous ion chromatography, which is perhaps a mouthful, but in fact is the logical development of ion exchange chromatography, which was the original process used to improve the separation of rare earths about 50 years ago, uh, during an, just during and after World War II. Continuous ion chromatography is the current state-of-the-art of, of ion exchange chromatography. And it's, again, applicable across the board, has been used, for example, in the uranium industry, in fertilizer industry, to, re to separate zirconium and hyphenium quite, uh, for the nuclear industry, and now is being applied to the rare earth industry. I see very, very bright future for continuous ion chromatography. Very interesting. But I want to just jump forward here. The keynote presentation by Amanda Lacaz, uh, you're, uh, you did a great job of introducing her. Can you tell us what surprised you? I noticed Linus was up 42% last week with their stock and actually had to put a news release out explaining that they did not have news. Um, <laughs> at their stock, uh, do you think it's because Amanda was in North America, Jack? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, yes. Actually, the Linus story is getting better by the day. It, it looks like they're going to be successful. They're going to make a success is measured by profitable. That's the important thing. So that it looks like Linus has done the right thing, as we like to say in the USA, and it's work, working out. That's why the stock is going up, uh, because the news from Linus is positive. There's no negative news. Not, uh, deadlines weren't missed. The uh, projects uh, didn't, you know, didn't not run. It's it's the it's the thing that people want to hear. And quite frankly, let's be honest. At this moment, light wearers outside of China, it's the only game in town. So you better play it. Well, I personally enjoyed Amanda's presentation on a number yes. of levels. I loved how she talked about operations, bottom lines. I liked how she quoted you, Jack. <laughs> yeah, uh, well. And. Uh, and then I wanted to ask you, were there any surprises from the panels that you thought were interesting that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise had you not been at this event? Uh, Tracy, there, there were actually too many to comment on. Uh, let's put it this way. I, I It was a great learning experience for me. I know that uh, people don't uh, think I do this, but I actually was listening and I was making notes because a, a lot of things were happening. People have to, you can't just pick something out of the air. These are holistic stories, the, the, these were uh, development companies. And quite frankly, the, the field is narrowing dramatically, but, but the survivors are strong. They really are. Uh, I realize the market is down. It's hard to find uh, capital for development, but the market has chosen the survivors. And I urge investors to pay attention to the fact that these companies have fought the good fight and they're still there. Support them. There is no company out there in development that I don't think should be uh, brought to, to into production. I mean, today. Jack, you were absolutely fantastic at the Technology Mental Summit. I understand we're doing another one in May or June, so... Uh, Take a look at your calendar and get back to me as soon as possible. And as okay. always, it's a pleasure. Okay, thank you.